Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I have another budget Android phone that I wanna show off to you guys. This is the Elephone S8. Now I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. It's E-L-E-P-H-O-N-E. -E -E. So I think it's Elephone. Either way, this is a really nice budget phone at 229 right now on Gearbest. I'll leave a link in the description. So the bezel-less phones are all the rage right now and this is a tri bezel phone. Tiny bezels on three sides and where your home button is down there. Got a pretty big bezel, but it does have a beautiful six inch screen. Now for a $229 phone, I was blown away when I took this out of the box and started using it. I've had it for a few days and I can honestly say that it's worth the money. This is an unlocked GSM phone. In the box, you get the phone itself, a clear case for the back of the phone, the user manual, a USB type C charger, and I actually got the European charger I'm not too worried about it. I have a bunch laying around, but it is not a quick charge unit. I did miss this in the box. This is an headphone adapter from USB type C to 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So there is no real headphone jack on this phone. Before I get into the specs, I just want to show you the phone here. We're going to be charging from a USB type C port. It has dual stereo speakers and they get really loud. There's actually a little bass to this thing. On one side, we have the volume rocker and the power button. On the other side, we do have the SIM card slot, and this does take dual nano SIM cards. On the back of the unit, we have our 21 megapixel primary shooter with an LED for flash or a flashlight. Now the back is constructed of plastic, but all around the edges is nice aluminum. The first thing that caught my eye about this phone was the beautiful screen. It's a six inch 1440p LCD display. It's also covered in corning glass. You really can't beat it for the price of this phone. It is a beautiful display. Some of you might have noticed by the title, this is a 10 core CPU built into here. We have the Helio X25 Deca core at 2.5 gigahertz. And only two cores actually go to 2.5 gigahertz, but the phone does feel lightning fast. Now I've been using a OnePlus 5. I love the phone, one of my favorite phones that I've ever owned. And I switched over to this for a few days. I really don't notice any lag at all with the Elephone S8. The GPU is a Mali T880 MP4 GPU. It's a four core GPU and it's pretty powerful for what it is. They also packed in four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. I did mention the display, but I really can't get over this. For the price on this phone, this is a six inch 1440p display. It's not an IPS display or anything. It's just LCD, but the viewing angles are really good for a screen like this. And I also mentioned that it does have Corning Gorilla Glass built in. For storage, we have an onboard 64 gigabyte chip. There is no SD card slot. That's one of the downsides to this phone, but if you're not loading up a lot of games on here, you should be good to go with 64 gigabytes, especially if you're using Google Drive. The front camera is an eight megapixel. The only downside to this camera, it's located on the bottom, and when you do go to portrait mode or selfie mode, whatever you wanna call it, it prompts you to turn the phone over. It's a little odd looking at the bottom of the phone to get a picture of yourself. The rear camera is a 21 megapixel with autofocus. It does shoot 4K video, but don't expect S8 quality pictures or even iPhone 7 quality pictures. It's not that great of a camera, but then again, we're talking about a $200 phone here. It does have a fingerprint sensor on the front, gyroscope, hall sensor, proximity sensor, GPS, a GPS, and a dual card nano SIM slot. The operating system is Android 7.1.1. Now with the specs out of the way, I wanna test some performance running Android on this phone. I'm gonna run a few benchmarks, I'm gonna test a few native Android games, and I'm also gonna test a few emulators. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'll be using a GameSir G3S controller for these game tests. Now I'm not gonna have it set up like this, but if you buy one of these on Amazon, you do get a dock for it, and the Elophone S8 fits perfectly. The first benchmark I ran was Antutu. We scored a 96,305. I was really impressed that we scored this high. Keep in mind, my OnePlus 5 actually scores a 181,000, so it's significantly faster, but it's a lot more expensive also. 3D was a little lacking at 19,000, but everything else it looks pretty good, even the RAM speed. The next benchmark I ran was Geekbench 4. We're kind of lacking in the single core score. I was expecting a little better here. It's only 958. Same thing with the multi-core. Since this is a 10-core phone, I thought we would score at least a 6,000. 4,800's not bad for a budget phone, though. And finally, I ran 3D Mark. 
So one of the big things holding this phone back is the GPU. It's using that Mali TA80 MP4. It's a decent GPU, but they should have went with something a little higher end because Slingshot Extreme 1040. I want to show you a little comparison. So I'm going to go to best devices. Keep in mind, we scored a 1000. We're going to keep it at that. The Nvidia Shield Android TV scores a 3900. So we're way down here at the bottom of this list. I also ran an iStorm Unlimited. We scored a 17,281. I'll move back to the comparison chart and change it to iStorm Unlimited so we can get a good look at this. As you can see, it's definitely not going to keep up with the $800 to $1,000 phones here. Now, one of the best phones I recommend right now, even though there's been rumor about the OnePlus 5T, is the OnePlus 5. You can get them on GearBest for pretty cheap, and it is a solid phone. So here's the first native Android game that I'm going to be testing. This is Asphalt Extreme. I have to record it with my camera on my OnePlus 5. It still comes out pretty good, but I wish they would put HDMI on all of these phones using that GameSir controller, and it works perfectly with the Elephone S8. So I really had no doubt that it would handle these native Android games fairly well. The next game I'm gonna be testing is Bully and then San Andreas, but I'll leave you with a little gameplay here. It runs really well. And here's Rockstar Bully Anniversary Edition. Running smooth. I'm going to turn this up to high if it's not already set there. And it's already on high. These are the only graphical settings in the game. So high is going to be your best setting here. Let's just run around a little bit and see if we get any lag. I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to handle this game really well. The final native Android game I want to test was San Andreas. We're going to run out here a little bit and then I'll see if we can set everything to high. Looking smooth so far. We'll go into the options menu. Video. And it looks like everything's on max. Even the resolution is set to 100%. I'm going to go ahead and grab a car and cruise around a little bit. Now it's time to move on to some emulation tests. I'm going to be testing some PSP games using PPSSPP. First up, Ratchet & Clank, one of my favorite games of all time. Hopefully it runs it well. I'm going to skip through here and get into some gameplay. The FPS is listed in the top right hand corner. This should be running at 30 FPS. Even if you dip down to let's say 27, 26, you still won't feel it unless you're looking at the FPS. Seems to be handling Ratchet and Clank pretty well. I've ran through here a little while. 
Haven't noticed any big issues. Now this game isn't terribly hard to emulate. It does give me trouble on a few devices, but the main game I wanted to test was God of War, and I got a feeling it's just not going to handle it well. And here's God of War Chains of Olympus. From the start menu, I knew it wasn't going to run it well. Everything's set to the lowest. I put a few tweaks on, and we're still under 30. This game should run at 60. But this is the hardest game to emulate with PPSSPP. It's just not going to cut it. So if this game doesn't work well, Midnight Club Dub Edition 3 is not going to work well either. But seeing that Ratchet and Clank work, there are hundreds of PSP games that are going to work fine on this phone. And finally, we have an N64 game, Conker's Bad Fur Day. This is notoriously hard to emulate. I'm using the Moopin 64FZ emulator from the App Store. I do notice a little lag. I do have the FPS listed in the bottom middle here. This game usually runs at 20 to 30 FPS on other devices. I can see it dip down and I definitely notice a little lag here. It's not awfully bad, but to me this is definitely unplayable. So my final thoughts, the phone does have a lot going for it. It's not great for emulation, but for everyday use, it's awesome. The battery life is great on it. The screen is beautiful and the sound out of the stereo speakers on the bottom is phenomenal for a phone priced at 229. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'm going to leave links to GearBest down below. They do have them in blue, black, and red is coming up if you want to grab one. I'm constantly amazed to see all these cheap phones coming out with great performance. The main thing, I can't stress it enough, the screen on this thing is phenomenal. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.